All right. Hopefully, I can get my bases right on this one. So this one would change to 6 to the power of y equals x. That's pretty good. So now when I graph this thing, um, well, uh, I can't fit much on this when I have positive values of y, but I can fit a lot with the negatives. So I got an x and a y. Again, we did change f of x to y, which, again, is something you guys should know by now. And I think you guys do. So we're choosing values of y and solving for x. So I got a 0, 1, 2, 3 is not really necessary. We've got negative 1 and negative 2, which is going to be enough to show us what's happening on this graph. Now, of course, when y is 0, then we get an x value 1. So that gives us this point right here. On the other hand, when y is 1, then x is 6. That's also a pretty easy point to graph. So 6, 1 would be this point. When y is 2, x would be 36, which, again, will not fit on the graph. But it's going pretty uh, horizontal at this point. I mean, it's not completely horizontal, but it's flattening out pretty well. When y is negative 1, then we get 1 sixth. When y is negative 2, we get 1 over 36. So this is where the values get really close to 0. And the bigger that base value, the faster it's going to get really close to 0. So I'm satisfied with that. And then uh, something like this. So the red line would be pretty nice on that. And then, yes, once again, we have this intercept. This would be considered an x-intercept because the y value is 0. And yeah, I'll just point out, on this one, we don't have any y-intercepts because this line is never going to touch that y-axis.